daily current affairs session of new IAS. Today, the 3rd of April, we have some very relevant topics. Let us first take a look at them. National Culture Fund, second, a tentative World Heritage Sites in the Northeast India. Rusa Rashtriya Uchata Shiksha Abhiyan, Research Parks, and we have a new addition to our daily current affairs session that is prelims current affairs capsules. These are some trivial facts, but at, uh, may at times uh, be important for the prelims point of view. So we have added these as well from today onwards. First is the National Culture Fund. This is a trust under Charitable Endowment Act of 1890. It was established in 1996 by the government of India. This year may be noted. Also, the aim is a national culture fund. So, it is to preserve India's rich cultural heritage. For that, we need to mobilize funds. So, the resource mobilization is a prime objective of national culture fund. Uh, participation can be from corporates, uh, individuals, public sector, private sector, non-government organizations, NGOs, etc. It is managed by a council. This council is headed by the culture minister. It is a very natural that the national culture fund. So the council is headed by the national culture minister. The policies are executed by an executive committee which is headed by the secretary of culture. Uh, as of now, we have a one-time grant from the government that is 19.5 crore. No other funds have been allocated to this fund as of now. The very last prelims, we had a question on the Scopus Fund. So, please note the uh, amount. It is 19.5 crore and it is a one-time Corpus Fund. Uh, we, they also take uh, contributions from uh, in the form of voluntary donations also. A very notable fact is that the completion of projects in this fund is very timely because it is in accordance with the MOU signed with the concerned donor organization. So the fund's implementation is very timely. Uh, the, some of the uh, ancient uh, or cultural sites that have been uh, implemented or renovated by using these funds are Humayun's tomb. Uh, Taj Mahal, also in uh, Kerala's Cochin, we have uh, the Jewish synagogue's clock tower. All these are examples of uh, the sites which have been renovated using this fund, that is National Culture Fund. Uh, the very uh, next topic for the day is, we have identified six historical sites for uh, being a tentative entry into the uh, national, uh, sorry, world uh, historical sites. So, world uh, historical site list, uh, there are six uh, historical sites have been identified for the tentative entry into it. Uh, the first one is Apatani Cultural Landscape, it is in Arunajal Pradesh. Uh, then we have some iconic sari weaving clusters of India. Moedam, it is a burial system practiced in Assam. We'll have a detailed view into that. Namdabha National Park, Arunachal Pradesh. River Island of Majuli, it is in the Brahmaputra River system. Uh, Themdam Fortified Village, Arunachal Pradesh. So out of these, we already have learned about three of them in our previous uh, prelims, current affairs, digest, new digest have been made. Three of them, that is the Apatani tribes here in picture, Namdabha National Park, also the Majuli, we are already familiar with these three. The other three may be new for us, so we will have a detailed look into this. The first one is iconic sari weaving clusters of India. These are um, places or sites in India which have a rich tradition of sari weaving. Uh, the five states have been identified with this. One is Andhra Pradesh, Maharashtra, Madhya Pradesh, Uttar Pradesh and Assam. In Andhra Pradesh, we all know uh, Pochampalli silks. Uh, many of us might own uh, one of such gorgeous saris. So, uh, Pochampalli silk, it has the traditional geometric patterns, ikat style. Please note the style, ikat style. This might come for your uh, match the following in the prelims questions. Uh, the second is Maharashtra Paithan. It has pure gold threads and yarns of silk. Uh, Madhya Pradesh Chanderi is also another famous type of sari weaving in India. 
uh, it is the ornamentation, building ornamentation motifs uh, find a unique place in this style of uh, sari weaving. So, Andhra Pradesh, Pochambali type, Maharashtra, Paithan, Madhya Pradesh, Chanderi. The next is uh, Uttar Pradesh, Banaras is yet another famous type of sari weaving. Uh, the motifs, it has a uh, unique uh, pure silk, Banarasi silk, Zari work, also the Hindu lore and Islamic tradition. This is a combination of both, Banarasi silk, we are very familiar with it. Assam, uh, Suol Kuchi, Muga type, Assam is famous for Muga silk. Uh, Assam tribal weaver clusters, these are some uh, tribes there, it is not very significant, but at times UPSC might go the extra mile and uh, ask about the tribes in a particular state. So, uh, for further reading, you can refer to our uh, current affairs capsules also. Uh, so, uh, the Dimasa tribes here must be noted. Dimasa tribes, uh, they are the producers of ND. It is a type of fabric having a collaboration of cotton and silk. So, Dimasa tribes are famous for this. The picture shows the Dimasa tribal. Uh, so, uh, the main important thing here is that um, which state caters to which type of silk? That is a probable question for our prelims. Andhra, Pochambali, Maharashtra, Paithan, Madhya Pradesh, Chanderi, uh, Uttar Pradesh, Banaras, Assam, Solkochi and uh, tribal groups associated with it. It can be had for a detailed view only. Now next is the uh, historical site of Moedam. This is a unique system of vaulted mounds. It is basically a burial system. This burial system is practiced by Ahom dynasty in Assam. Assam state, Ahom dynasty, burial system, that is Moedam. Uh, Thai Ahom clan, these uh, in-depth facts might not be very uh, needed, very much needed, but uh, to have, um, to cover those topics as well, we have included this in this. Uh, Thai Ahom clan from China, they have actually migrated to the Patkai Hills in Arunachal Pradesh. Uh, and uh, later this area got the name of Cho Rai Dio, Chinese. Now this is a revered uh, site for the Ahom dynasty. So uh, these people, they actually bury their royals in these sites. So they consider their royals as goats themselves. So these are uh, royal burial sites. And you can see the picture here the undulating topography of the area. It uh, actually uh, reminiscences the heavenly mountains. So that actually uh, is attuned to the um, a home a system of uh, belief of life, death, spirit and the other world. So all this um, is actually a collaboration of things. Moedams of Choira Dio. Uh, this is a world's largest um, vaulted mount burial chamber. So uh, the Points to be noted here are what are Moedams? It can be a single statement question for the UPSC. Moedams are burial systems. It is practiced by Ahom dynasty. It is in Azam. These are the main points. Tembang fortified village. This is in Arunajal Pradesh. Tembang fortified village is in Arunajal Pradesh. The tribes who inhabited this area is the Monpa tribe. Arunajal Pradesh, we know the tribes, Monpa tribes. Uh, the Tenbang, Dizong, these uh, trivial facts uh, are not very much important, but it is to be noted that what is Tenbang? It is a fortified village. It is in Arunajal Pradesh. The tribe is Monpa tribes. Uh, it has a Tibeto Bhutanese as well as Northeast Indian because the Arunajal border area. So it has Tibeto Bhutanese and Northeast Indian architectural styles. Uh, the villages here uh, ha are fortified because it has uh, witnessed fierce battles in the past. That is why they are having fortifications. Even in the 1962 Indo China War, they, uh, they had a fierce, a witnessed fierce battles. The uh, Tembang area, uh, these are not very important. The second one, there is an important bird area by BirdLife International. The architecture, we have just given the features, but it is not very relevant for the prelims perspective, but for mains they can be questioned. So preparing, we are having a combined preparation, so uh, you might note these as well. Uh, these are the Tembang fortified village, Arunachal Pradesh. 
Now moving to the, uh, there is uh, the next one is a scheme by the government, uh, Rashtriya Uchatar Shiksha Abhiyan, RUSA. We have already learned this in the previous lectures. Uh, centrally sponsored scheme, Cent not central sector scheme, centrally sponsored scheme. So it would have funding from center as well as states. The ratio is given here 60 is to 40 for general category. If the state is a special category now, there is no such categorization, 90 is to 10. 100% for union territories. Uh, this was implemented in 2013. This scheme is not very new, but the uh, recent minister has, uh, Minister of uh, Human Resource Development, he has made a mention of this. So it becomes uh, natural for us to learn that. Now the RUSA, it was implemented in 2013. So from the term itself, it is evident that it is for higher educational institutions, funding for higher educational institutions. Uh, it can be for colleges, for infrastructural grants in colleges and schools, universities. Uh, the, how the funding goes, the central ministry would grant it to the states. It would in turn give it to state higher education councils and then to the corresponding institutions. It is a norm-based and outcome dependent. A note, um, there are particular norms, it cannot be given as such. Uh, so funding to states are, are done only after a critical appraisal of state higher education plan. State higher education plans are made. So uh, the fund, um, it, it ensures that the fund doesn't go wasted. So there is um, particular norms for that and only if that outcomes are uh, met, the fund would be given again. That is RUSA. Now we have the next topic, research parks. Research parks, why do we do research? To promote innovation. So the aim is innovation. How do we promote that via incubation centers or uh, academia and industry collaborate among themselves so that the innovation is prospered? So uh, companies, uh, some companies, they might have a research base. So they actually take part in this and uh, the academic expertise also is put in. And thus we can uh, have much more research. India is very lagging in R&D. So we need this research box. Uh, so this is very motivating for uh, higher education, PhD programs. We have research box already in these IITs and one IISC Bangalore. That is a research park. It is not very uh, significant, I suppose, but still it was in use. Please make a note. Uh, now, the, as I told, uh, the prelims current affairs capsules, these doesn't require detailed explanation, but just get a glance of these. Ice gate, the expansion can be asked. Ice gate is Indian Customs Electronic Commerce or Electronic Data Interchange Gateway. Ice gate uh, is, an, um, is instituted by the CBEC, Central Board of Customs and uh, Excise. Uh, sorry, that is excise, there is a correction there. Uh, an e-commerce portal, this is for um, the transactions in the customs website. For e-filing, we are moving into digital platforms everywhere. So uh, CBEC has also introduced that, that is IceGate. Uh, E-Sanjit is yet another project by the um, Excise and Customs Department uh, for paperless processing, digital mode, E-Sanjit. Uh, Saksham, uh, it can be a probable question. Uh, this is a report by UGC, University Grants Commission. Uh, it would uh, take measures for ensuring the safety of women. Saksham is related to women safety and gender sensitization on campuses. UGC's mission, Saksham uh, can be a, a single statement question for the prelims. It is a report by the UGC. It is for women sensitization and uh, women's safety. And that's all for the day. Uh, study well, take care.